Welcome to our exploration of how LED lights work. In today's modern world, LED lights have become ubiquitous, lighting up our homes, streets, and devices. But have you ever wondered how these tiny diodes produce such bright and efficient light? Let's start by peeling back the layers of an LED. At its heart lies a semiconductor chip or a diode. In the case of LEDs, the conductor material is typically aluminum gallium arsenide. In pure aluminum gallium arsenide, all of the atoms bond perfectly with their neighbors, leaving no free electrons to conduct electric current. They are in an octet state, a state in which atoms are the most stable and do not take part in chemical reactions anymore so when an electron tries to flow through the material it fails. But in doped or impure material, additional atoms change the balance, either adding free electrons or creating holes where electrons can go. Either of these alterations makes the material more conductive. A semiconductor with extra electrons is called n-type material, since it has extra negatively charged particles. In n-type material, free electrons move from a negatively charged area to a positively charged area. A semiconductor with extra holes is called p-type material, since it effectively has extra positively charged particles. Electrons can jump from hole to hole, moving from a negatively charged area to a positively charged area. As a result, the holes themselves appear to move from a positively charged area to a negatively charged area. A diode consists of a section of n-type material bonded to a section of p-type material, with electrodes on each end. This arrangement conducts electricity in only one direction. When no voltage is applied to the diode, electrons from the n-type material fill holes from the p-type material along the junction between the layers, forming a depletion zone. In a depletion zone, the semiconductor material is returned to its original insulating state, all of the holes are filled, so there are no free electrons or empty spaces for electrons. And electricity can't flow. To get rid of the depletion zone, you have to get electrons moving from the n-type area to the p-type area and holes moving in the reverse direction. To do this, you connect the n-type side of the diode to the negative end of a circuit and the p-type side to the positive end. The free electrons in the n-type material are repelled by the negative electrode and drawn to the positive electrode. The holes in the p-type material move the other way. When the voltage difference between the electrodes is high enough, the electrons in the depletion zone are boosted out of their holes and begin moving freely again. The depletion zone disappears, and the charge moves across the diode. The purpose of the diode is to produce photons or light particles. Photons are released due to electrons jumping from a higher orbital to a lower orbital. For an electron to jump from a lower orbital to a higher orbital, its energy level must be boosted. Conversely, an electron releases energy when it drops from a higher orbital to a lower one. This energy is released in the form of a photon. A greater energy drop releases a higher energy photon, characterized by a higher frequency. As we saw earlier, free electrons moving across a diode can fall into empty holes from the p-type layer. This involves a drop from the conduction band to a lower orbital, so the electrons release energy in the form of photons. This happens in any diode, but you can only see the photons when the diode is composed of certain material. Assuming that the light is produced in the contact surface of the two layers then how are we going to see the light if, for the most part, it is covered? The answer is simple we just have to make a layer so thin that light can pass through the layer. Now we have the source of light. We will add a cone-shaped reflector and a phosphorus layer to make it more efficient. In reality, the diode is producing blue light but in impact with phosphorus in the phosphorus layer, white light is formed. The last thing we will discuss is about RGB LED light, simply their working is the same as the light we previously discussed, the only difference is that they have three diodes for each red, green, and blue. The nature of the material and the wavelength of the photon produced by the material determines the color of the light produced. By changing the amount of voltage in each diode we can get light with thousands of color.